and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're onto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. Isaiah chapter 4. This is a season of judgment. You know that there are things that God is judging in this season. It's a season of perfection. He wants a perfect church. Amen. The Bible said in the book of Ephesians that Jesus is coming for a church without what? Without spot, without wrinkle, or any such what? blemish but that it might be holy and sanctified can i hear an amen that is a church that jesus christ is coming for and he's doing everything within his power to make that possible a rapturable church amen and his ministers are supposed to be able to set the example because if god is coming for a holy church then he cannot be coming for a sinful priesthood Amen. If it's coming for a holy church, then it cannot be coming for a greedy priesthood. If it's coming for a holy church, then it cannot be coming for a rebellious priesthood. Because we the pastors who are supposed to be the examples to the flock. Is what we do by the flock. What? You know, that's what they copy. Praise the Lord. So if God is going to have a holy church, then you'll have holy pastors. Am I communicating? If he's going to have a church that has financial integrity, he's going to have he's going to have to have pastors with high level of integrity. Amen. If he's going to have a submissive church, then he's going to have submissive pastors who stay under authority. And this is a project that God is carrying out. Amen. You know, so Pastor said God has been talking to him now. Been talking to him now about the season of judgment and you know because if there is any group of people who should live long amen it should be the ones who are what who are serving god god gave us a covenant of longevity he said with long life i will satisfy you and do what and show you my salvation the number of your days i will fulfill you shall see your children's children that's psalm 128 and verse 6 so if he would do that for the believer he would do more for the minister who is his greatest his greatest what praise lord asset the greatest asset that god has are the ministers are the pastors so if you will preserve the believer and leave him to live long on the earth then what about the one who is preaching for him am i communicating so isaiah chapter 4 and from verse 2 you know let's start from there okay please can we read together in that day the branch of the lord shall be what beautiful and glorious and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appealing for those of israel who have what escaped so it's a prophecy of the last days okay next verse please uh -huh. and it shall come to pass that he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called what? Holy. Everyone who is recorded among the living in Jerusalem will be called what? Holy. Verse 4. When the Lord, that's how God is going to do it. When the Lord has washed away what? The field of the daughters of Zion okay and purged the blood of jerusalem from her midst by what the spirit of what of judgment and by the spirit of what of burning so here they mentioned two ways that is going to do it one is the spirit of burning what we call the fire of the holy spirit because fire is for purification that's why every christian should be on fire every church should be on fire fire purifies you know, so sometimes when I see people, 
you know, releasing Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire on the enemy. Holy Ghost fire. No, for me, Holy Ghost fire should not be sent out. Holy Ghost fire should be sent in. There are things he needs to purge. There are things he needs to kill. Hallelujah. But the second one he mentioned here is what? Is the spirit of what? Of judgment. So God uses judgment. He uses chastisement to correct people. He uses it to purify people. Okay? And an aspect of judgment is even death. Is even death. God kills people. Sometimes he does it so that their bodies can be destroyed, but their spirit what? will be saved in the last day. In the last day. Do I have a witness in the house? Do I have a witness in the house? So, please tell somebody, this is a season of judgment. Therefore, it is time to clean up. T tell the person, it's time to clean up. It's time to make adjustments in our lives, in our ministries. Because judgment must begin where? In the house of God. And if it started in the house of God, where in the house of God do you think it will start? From the ushering department? From the choir? From where? From the altar, from the pulpit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, so, Pastor mentioned that there are four things that God is judging. Which is what I want us to look at. He said there are four things that God is judging in these days. So, we need to be aware of them. I'm sure, you know, there, are, there might be more. But he shared four with us in that meeting. Praise the Lord. Okay, number one. <clears throat> he said the four groups of people God is judging. Number one is those who are playing with immorality. Those who are what? Who are playing with sexual immorality with sexual immorality because the bible teaches that we are the temple of the holy spirit so every believer is a temple of the holy spirit every minister is a temple of the holy spirit we are carrying the holy spirit we are carrying the power of god and you, you cannot mix electricity you know with some other things praise the lord it will cause a major problem a major problem so, part of what God is doing, he wants a holy church. He wants a pure church. He wants a sanctified church. And one of the areas where his hand is coming on is immorality. Immorality. Because those who preach for God must be pure. Those who preach for God must be holy. Those who preach for God must be sanctified. You know, so, you know, so somebody cannot finish sleeping around and he comes to the altar you know, and he's preaching. Please give me Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Okay, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your what? Your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your what? Your reasonable service. As far as God is concerned, the first ministry the first service you render to God is presenting to him a vessel that is holy. A vessel that is pure. Because anything you offer with a contaminated vessel is contaminated. Whether it's worship, whether it's preaching, whatever somebody offers with a contaminated vessel is contaminated. An example, if you come to my house, praise the Lord. You come to my house and um, and I go to you know the best joints in Lagos, okay, and buy food for you, okay. Maybe I go to Four Points by Sheraton or go to Eco and buy food for you, but I serve it to you with a bowl that we we'll use in my toilet. How many of you will eat it? Uh -huh. Sheraton food. You will not eat. Why? Why? Because of the vessel. Because the vessel contaminates the food. The vessel contaminates the food. So that's what they are dealing with here. Before any ministry, before anything somebody is doing for God, 
the state of the vessel the state of the vessel the vessel must be purified the vessel must be sanctified that is where ministry starts it doesn't start with preaching it starts with the vessel so the bible said in a great house there are many vessels some unto honor some unto what unto dishonor he said if a man therefore shall what Pute himself from this he shall become a vessel of honor unto me so there is purification an example i've been in this ministry now this year is my 20th year in dominion city i've watched pastor's life he's been an example for 20 years he's not just a pastor he's a christian to the core he's a christian to the core 20 years i've been here scandal free no story amen and that is how Trust me, this is the example that has been set for us. If you're writing an exam where they gave you an example and you still fail the exam, you're what they call in Yoruba, Olodo. O, what? Olodo. In Igbo, they call it Iti. Then when the Iti is too much, they call it Iti in Pataka. That means another level of because the person has what an example an example so god has given us what an example jesus said for your sakes i sanctify myself why so that you too might be sanctified okay so pastor has not just done it for god he has also done it because of us and has set for us the example and and some of us we're also leading pastors we're also leading pastors the wrong things we are doing they will take it to another level they will take it to another level You're the type that kisses sisters. Then you'll be producing Kissinger. <laughs> you'll be producing Kissinger. Because there are people following you. There are people watching you. There are cell leaders watching you. There are satellite church pastors. We are laughing, but these things are very serious. For your sakes, I sanctify myself that you too might be sanctified so the first is what is sexual immorality immorality okay let me start by saying you know there are four dimensions of purity there are four dimensions of purity okay four dimensions of purity the first is mental purity that's where purity starts mental what purity so you hear Jesus said, he that looketh on a woman what? Lustfully has committed what? Adultery. Mental purity. So somebody is not committing the physical one, but pornography. In Nigeria today, pornography is ravaging people. Sometimes when we do encounter, ha! Pornography. And pastors are watching it. Pastors are watching it. I remember in the meeting we had where pastor was warning he said go and block all of those things you have to be brutal about it brutal because your future your destiny depends on it you have to be brutal about it he said block it let somebody else have the code let somebody else have the code pornography is easier than fornication fornication you need to convince somebody in pornography, you just need to tap something. You just click. It's at the click of a button. It's at the click of a button. So people stay in their house. They are falling and rising and preaching. Falling and rising and clicking and preaching. So this is 21st century. It's not the days of Mary Slesso. We have to be brutal about these things. Have to put out so the first is what is mental purity, the things going into your mind, going into your mind. In my house, when we watch TV, it's not everything we watch. It, you know, you see, so sometimes they are kissing. He said, Let me see where this thing is going to. <laughs> you have become a, a monitoring spirit. 
Let me see where this thing is going to. So he sees that there. Then, the next thing they start removing clothes. Then, he will not change. He say, hi! Don't the bad. <laughs> White people are, are bad. Even some will just stay and be shaking their head. Hey! This world is spoiling. <laughs> See what human beings are doing. Be deceiving yourself. Be deceiving yourself. Because we have to be brutal. How about this? This is 21st century. Come that you watch advert, everything they are just selling nudity. Because men are moved by what they see, especially men. Even women now watch pornography. But men, especially, there is a mind bombardment. There is a mind bombardment. So that's the first area. Because some of the people are starting from the physical side instead of starting from where they should start. The mind. The second dimension of purity is verbal purity. Verbal purity. Because Paul said to Timothy, I read that scripture many years ago. He said, you know, respect the, the elderly men as fathers. Elderly women as what? As mothers. The younger men as brothers. The younger women as sisters, then he added with all purity. He didn't add with all purity with the older women. If you have issue with older women, you need deliverances. <laughs> deliverances. So he did not say it about the older women, but you know, but with the younger women, he said with all purity. So that became my guiding law as a pastor. As a pastor, I pastor a lot of ladies. I don't know who is a virgin and who is not. So I don't understand how a pastor will sit down with somebody to be finding out, discovering virginity. Are you Mongo Park? <laughs> Are you Mongo Park? I don't know who is a virgin and who is not. Our discussion does not go there. Sit down. Are you a virgin? <laughs> Bessie will say no. <laughs> He said, when did you lose it? <laughs> say 25 years ago. Say, you a bad girl. <laughs> sure? The more you know that somebody is a bad girl, the more in trouble you are. You should not know who is a bad girl. How people do that? I handled the case, a pastor. He told the girl that he's traveling. The girl said, what do I buy for you? He said, don't buy me anything. He said, I must buy something for you. And I said, what is your bra size? Bra size. The size of her bra. A pastor. Asking a lady. And there's one case. Somebody called the girl. 12 o'clock in the night. He said, where are you? He said, I'm in my house, of course. He said, what are you doing? He said, I'm lying down, of course. He said, what are you wearing? At 12 o'clock in the night, people first of all fall with their mouth. They fall with their mouth because there is no verbal purity. There is no verbal purity. They discuss nonsense. They discuss trash. With the opposite sex. And they enter trouble. Then when they enter, they say, how did I get here? With your mouth. There is verbal purity. As a pastor, as a pastor, am I communicating? The Bible calls God the father of spirits. The father, but because God cannot come to earth to father all the spirits physically, he now appointed us as pastors so that we can father people's spirit, not their flesh, not their body. So if I'm the, the father of their spirit or the pastor of their spirit, why should I know that they're a virgin or not? It, it's not my business. And it's not my jurisdiction. There is verbal purity. Number three, there is emotional purity. There is emotional purity. Most times, people that even 
commit fornication, they get, they get emotionally entangled first. First. You notice yourself, you're falling in love with somebody. And maybe you're a married man. And your heart is going. You can tell that your heart is going. Hey, don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Sometimes you find people that you're attracted to. You need to know who you're attracted to. And you're getting close to the person. And finally, like somebody said, if you don't deal with the chemistry, it will lead to physics, physical contact. And it, it will produce a biology, junior. 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 You're not careful as a pastor, you start a children's church. You have to deal with the chemistry. Tell somebody, you, you, you have to deal with the chemistry or a list of physics and it produces a biology. And I'm sure you don't want biology. <laughs> so, emotional involvement. You keep seeing each other. You keep... Can I hear an amen? Then the fourth is a physical one which is where, you know, but most times it does not start from there. That's the one that we focus on most of the time, but it doesn't start from there. Can I hear a big amen? amen. Can I hear a big amen? amen. You know, and there, are, and there are ways to start living. So one of them, you know, personal has shared it. Give attention to your spiritual life. That's where the thing starts from. Give attention to your what? To your spiritual life. If I would say, take it unto yourself unto yourself that means give attention to your human spirit most time people start having issue when their human spirit is drained of life drained of life drained of the life of god i've studied this bible do you know i've not seen one place where the bible says you know in the new testament be strong be strong what you hear is be strong in the lord and in the power of his might paul said to timothy be strong in the grace that is in our Lord Jesus Christ. So there is empowerment to live a holy life. An example, what you call the Holy Spirit. I tell you, the Holy Spirit is the spirit that makes you holy. Amen. Then you say, praise Lord, an evil spirit. An evil spirit is what? Is the spirit that makes you what? It's as simple as that. So if you stay in touch with the Holy Spirit, you remain holy. You abandon the Holy Spirit, expose yourself to evil spirits, you'll be evil. So, while we are running around, do you know the thing that we are doing? A life of devotion, a prayer life, a word life is very key if we are going to, because nobody was born holy. He's the grace of God. He's the help of God. Is the help of God. They that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as they go. They shall run and not be weary. They shall what? They shall walk and shall not what? Faint. Anytime your flesh becomes stronger than your human spirit. I think it's um, Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. For the flesh lost at what? Against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these two are what? Are contrary. Okay, please let me just do something. Please, Pastor Steve, can you come? Just one second. Thank you, sir. Please, can you come? These are two personalities. Please, can you stand here? Okay. Now, this is the flesh. Sorry, sir. This is the spirit. Now, if this is your spirit, this is your flesh. Now, if I put these two people in the ring and tell you to bet, where will you put your money? <laughs> eh? I go and fight him. I see. If your flesh is like this, your flesh is like this, and your spirit is like this, your flesh will be the one dragging your spirit anywhere it wants to go. Anywhere it wants to go. So what God wants us to do is to, is to have an exchange. Let this be what? Be the flesh and let this be what? Be the human spirit. So Paul said, I, the human spirit, beat my body, the flesh, and bring it under subjection. Why? Because the human spirit has been developed, has been fed, has been nourished, and is stronger than the flesh. 
So the human spirit runs the show. Runs the show. That is what it means that you are a spiritual man. You can be a pastor and not be spiritual. You can be a pastor and not be spiritual. A spiritual man is a man whose human spirit is stronger than the flesh. Whose human spirit dominates the flesh. That's a spiritual man. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Praise the Lord. So that exchange must happen. So we give attention. We give attention. To your human spirit give attention to the world give attention to prayer we have heard a lot about that somebody did a research they said the average japanese the average uh, um south korean pastor prays for two hours 30 minutes a day the average japanese pastor prays for 44 minutes a day the average american pastor prays for 22 minutes a day so you can see why all the scandals in America. The pastors don't pray. They are doing recording. Then they just wake up. Hi, man. How are you up there? Wow, laba, laba, laba. Loco toko tia. Leba. Then they drink tea. Labo sata. And they go out. They go out. See how you carry your phone and plug your phone. Plug it to power. Then your phone is fully charged. It can do anything. It can do Facebook. It can do, you know. You can do Twitter, you can make call, you can send text because the phone is what? It's fully charged. That is how your spirit needs to be fully charged. You plug it into power. One hour, two hours, three hours, you plug it into power. And it's fully charged. There are a lot of one bar pastors. One bar, one bar, one bar. The first temptation. Pew, 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 pew. Too many one bar pastors. Ask somebody, are you a one bar pastor? One bar. Are you a one bar pastor? Too many one bar pastors. Too many one bar pastors. Because we are running around. Then temptation comes, we can't stand it. Because the energy of the Holy Spirit is not there. The energy of the Holy Spirit is not there. So give attention to your spiritual life. Can I hear an Amen. Then set boundaries. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. Holiness is a combination of character and wisdom. Wisdom. You must know when to flee. You know, somebody was sharing. He said <laughs> that Joseph, when Potiphar's wife grabbed him, he did not speak in tongues. He spoke in legs. He spoke what? So the Bible says, flee all appearance of evil. So that's where boundaries need to be set. This issue about, about pornography, boundaries have to be set. Boundaries have to be set. With the opposite sex, boundaries have to be set. How can somebody be the pastor's secretary and he's dressing anyhow? Breast is showing. Everything is showing. And he brings you water. Pastor, water. What kind of water is that? inside church office then some people go and employ the kind of person they are attracted to then the one i've seen living in our pastors is welfare 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 most times people like somebody they like to be the one cooking for them because when likeness combines with food it becomes sweet but the problem is that sometimes, even campus pastor, then the lady will bring food to the BQ. He, he said, don't go, don't go, hang around. Let's hang around, let's cheat. And two of you. This is young Paul. <laughs> and every day, the same person that you like is bringing you young Paul. <laughs> and then one day it becomes Paul, yeah. <laughs> Attraction, attraction, attraction. Nobody is attracted to everybody. But you must know the people you are attracted to. They are not the ones you bring close and keep around. And keep around. There are people that even if I'm drunk, like Uriah, they are not a temptation. Even if I'm drunk, they are not a temptation. 
I keep them around me. They are safe. But they are people. I see them from afar. The remote and the TV are working. <laughs> it's true. I'm sincere. In any when I was in any way, I call my wife. I say, see this sister. I say, any day you hear I make her a secretary, raise an alarm. Blow the trumpet in Zion. <laughs> Sanctify a fast. I told her, ask her now. Because I like the girl. Be accountable. That's the next one. Be accountable. Be accountable. Be accountable. Pastor said the power of sin is secrecy. Is secrecy. Is secrecy. Be accountable. Have somebody hold you responsible. Maybe you have this area of weakness. Go talk to, talk to a pastor. Talk to a pastor. Let somebody know about it. I example, when we do, do an encounter, I want to tell people. All this self-medication, somebody is struggling, you have tried everything, you, you will see people, you know, they repent, they say, Lord, if I do it again, kill me! <laughs> they do it again, he has not killed them. Lord, I look at the woman again, let my eye go. He leaves the eye so he can read the Bible. So people are placing curses on themselves, do you know that? Instead of going to talk to somebody... And like, when you watch an adult, they say, if symptoms persist after three days, do what? <laughs> Some people, their symptoms have persisted for seven years. Fourteen years. They did not consult anybody. They are still doing self-medication. Talk to somebody about it. Let the, the person will not kill you. The person will help you. So he said, confess your fault one to another and do what? And pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. You may be restored. You may be set free. Talk to somebody that can help you. Then from there, let the person start holding you accountable. I mean, what I tell people is, it's not when you have finished doing it, you report to the person. No, when you're facing the temptation, you call the person. See you. An example, I heard a story. A full gospel man or so. I think he was traveling, struggling with pornography, and he was at the airport and in America, and they were selling all those magazines. He called his friend. He said, friend, See what I'm facing. Call me again in an hour time to find out if I did it. Because it's easier to confess temptation than to confess sin. Everybody faces temptation. So he calls his friend. It's not when you are finished doing it. Why he was facing the thing? He called him. Because somebody else knew about it. And he entered the flight. You know, one hour later, the friend called him. And there was nothing like that. He had overcome. Can I hear a big amen? amen? Can I hear a bigger amen? amen. Give me the loudest amen. amen. So let's be accountable. That's why God gave us one another. That's why he gave us pastors over us in different places. So that people, you know, Christianity, yes, we call it an individual race, but it's also a corporate word, race. We defend one another. We pray for one another. We stand with one another. For two are better than one. For they have a good reward for their labor. When one falls, another is able to lift him up. This Christianity of solo, on your own, and things are happening, and things are spoiling, will destroy a lot of people. Praise the Lord. Number two. <clears throat> the second thing that Pastor said God is judging is those playing with church funds. Those playing with what? With church funds. Those playing with church finance. You know? God's money is God's money. You know, sometimes I ask myself, if, if you have read the book Pastor gave us, Angelica Zambrano, you know, the, you know, the second one, and the, and the seven Colombian boys, people go to hell for eating their tithe. Okay? Their tithe. What about the one that now is the tithe everybody paid? If there's something beyond her, maybe hello, you should go there. You should go there. I fear church money. I fear church. That's another area where Pastor has set us an example. In this ministry, is not a signatory to any account. 
Meanwhile, he's a geo. He's not a signatory to any account. He has kept saying it. One couple of God's money cannot find his way into his house. And he has been in this thing for long. He has been in this thing for long. And if God has blessed him like this, if God has kept him like this, let's follow this example. Let's follow this example. As a pastor, you must know what is your own and what is not your own. An example, the sons of Eli. God put something clear. How they take their own. You know, you use that fork and anyone that comes out, it's your own. As a priest, you go. You leave the other one. They will, they will eat their own. They will eat God's own. And God killed two of them. And God killed two of them. And God killed two of them. An example, tight. tight. I've had people bring tight to me. Even last Sunday, one guy gave me a seed. Plus tight. Two of them, he wrapped the, <laughs> wrapped the envelope. I thought it was one envelope. And I blessed him and collected it. And I got home, I saw the two envelopes. One is seed, the other one is tight. And, and the next morning, I brought the tight and gave, and gave it to the finance people. I've had times where people will write check. No name, no name. One million naira. And if I pay it into my account, it might be the, only the person that will know. Or maybe I create one account or something. And I will just take it to the church. They will put dominance in there. And, and the money goes. I tell myself, my father, you know, my dad was an accountant. And he worked for, worked for Anambra State Subtreasure. And not for one day, growing up, the I see, you know, maybe, you know, they came to arrest him, or that, 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 that and he finished. And I say, me, he was not born again. He does not have Holy Ghost. He didn't know the Bible. He was not a pastor. And he was able to faithfully handle and administer the finances of the government. How can his son, who is now a pastor, who has the Holy Ghost, be playing with church money? My judgment will be greater. My judgment will be greater. And it's one of those things that inspire me. Praise the Lord. A life of integrity. A life of integrity. An example, we know that tithe is not your own. Even if somebody pays, I've even had people who come to me, he say, Pastor, I want you to eat my tithe. Yes. I tell them, I don't eat your tithe. I don't. I'll pray for them. I say, take it there. One called me one day. He said, Pastor, you are the one that prayed for me to get this job. And she got the job. Her first salary was 400 and something thousand. She called me on phone. He said, I want to give you my first fruit. I said, I don't take first fruit. Do I look like the first fruit? <laughs> and she said, I want you. You are the one that did the prayer. Because sometimes brethren can jam your head with God. <laughs> brethren. And you tell yourself, Praise God, after all, is it not her money? And she said, I am the one who should eat it. First fruit is not even her money. That would say the first fruit is holy. I said, no. I said, I said, if you want to give me a seat for praying for you, you give me a seat. Don't give me first fruit. 430 something thousand. If it's somebody, you say, ah, ah, ah. Is it my fault? <laughs> That my ministry is flourishing. <laughs> tight is not your own. Please preach to somebody for me. Tell him tight is not your own. Tell him first fruit is not your own. So that you will not be the last fruit. God, people play with these things. People play with these things. Even sit faith. Sometimes people bring a seed. They are believing God for something. I won't lie to you. I do it. I tell them, is it to... Of course, if, 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 you know, the first person I asked, I said, is it to me or is it to church? And God corrected me. He said, don't put you first. Is it to church? <laughs> or is it to you? <laughs> so I started saying, is it to church? Because I want to know what I am taking. 
You might say, no, let me not ask the question so that they will not hinder my person. <laughs> then you a thief if you are afraid of asking the question. Amen? I don't want to take what is not my Because the people I fear for the most are my children. If this thing only deals with the pastor, but the children, I see my three children, you know, they are just, they are just running around, you know, having fun, enjoying their life, and I see them. I want them to be enjoying this life. They finish writing the exam. First here, second here, third here. Not the one that will lock the head. <laughs> Class of 32, 35 out of 32. <laughs> Then you now have one that's an imbecile. That be good morning. Good morning. It's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing. I want to finish pastoring and leave a blessing for them. Leave a good inheritance for them. So that God will just keep blessing them. They do one little thing. Things are happening for them. I don't want problem for them. I don't want problem for that woman. She did not commit a crime by marrying me. Because the things we do, they affect family. The things we do, they affect children. Go and see Judas. I think it's Psalm 109. And see how he destroyed all those children. Destroyed his wife. He said, let his children be vagabonds. When they cry, let nobody help. Let them be wiped out of the earth. Money. Financial issue. 30 pieces of silver. He was just saying, like, God, show me something I didn't see before. They were doing ministry in Nazareth, Galilee, Galilee. Judas wanted to own a land in Jerusalem. Do you know what that means? They are doing ministry in Abakeleke, an assistant pastor wants to own a land in Asokoro. My Tama. Judas. His dream was not owning a land in Galilee. Abuja. That land killed him. When they were not dropping lands at the apostles' feet, where was Judas? In hell. In hell. Not at the apostles' hand, feet. Just dropping land anyhow. Somebody for one plot of land. God. Destroyed his wife. Destroyed his children. Wife forever. God's money. You know, we call it church money. It's God's money. When we finish mountain tent in the cage, I was telling them because people enter the toilet, ladies, and steal the tissue, put it in their bag. We keep by. I said this is not church toilet; it's God's toilet. You stole God's tissue. <laughs> you stole God's tissue. I think it's church money. It's God's money. God, he said it's a trap, it's a snare for a man to devour that which is holy, something dedicated to God. Then on campus, there was this lecturer that had goats all over the campus. When you enter the school in UNEC, you know, when they finish the, what was that in the day for first years? Orientation and all that. The students will do an extra one for you. You know the extra one they do? They show you those goats. <laughs> they say, if you don't want to die, leave those goats. From first year to final year, I graduated. Those goats were still moving around. Because the man was an occult man. All the court boys, Bucania, Viking, pirate, if you like, pie anything you want to pie. They leave that go to them. <laughs> because there's a difference between secret court and occult. They are not the same. <laughs> they are not the same. <laughs> At all. Secret court and occult are not the same. <laughs> there are court inside two of them. They are not the same. So people see what belongs to God, what is dedicated to God, and they just collect it and play with it. Please, I beg you, pastors, from now on, anything that is not your own, please leave it alone. Leave it alone. Human beings might not see. There is a God there. There is a God out there. Please, any money that is not your own, please leave it alone. 
take what is your own. In the ministry, they have said, you know, the ministry policy is that 20% is your own. And you will not find it in many ministries. 20%. 20 20 20 go to other ministries and see if anybody will give you 20 even 10 20 then you still have prophet offering prophet offering you know you impact somebody's life he comes he says thank you is he not enough is he not enough that people now sit down and collect false food and eat Man, you have faith. You have faith. I mean, see, see, 20 years in this ministry, I don't have faith to touch first food. Nobody knows. Nobody's pushing you. But there's a God out there. Because one day something will happen. Everybody's asking how. Why? Can I hear a big amen? Okay, let me mention one or two things. Why do people have all this financial problem? Why do pastors steal? One of the reasons is that they have lost their passion for God. They've lost their passion for God. Anytime a pastor sits down and his major destiny is how to settle himself, his passion for God is gone. I will, I will tell you the truth. When you're, when you're passionate about God, <laughs> even God will be taking your own money. God will be what? Taking your own money. Hallelujah. It will be God that will be do, doing what? Will be taking your own money. You carry your own money and be pumping. And be pumping. And be pumping. Because you want this thing to move forward. Now, if you get to a point where it's hard to settle yourself, it's hard to. An example, the project that just finished in Lagos, the tent, you know, the tent and the the headquarters. If you see the amount of pastor's money that entered, he, he sat on that side for like three weeks or so. Even while the program was going on, he did one session, he would go to the side and as I was writing checks, they should buy this one, they should do that one, they should do this one, they should do that one, they should do that one. The geo himself. The geo himself. Just, you know, release it. Because he's passionate, he's crazy about God. About God. And that is how we are to be. That is what has been more there for us. Is someone listening to me? So when you're crazy about God, you'll be releasing it. You will not have time to take what is God's own. You will not have that kind of time. Am I talking to somebody? You will not have that kind of time to take what belongs to God. You'll be giving God your own. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The first land was bought for pastor. He sold it. And he sold it as a seed. And many of us have followed that kind of example. Please, let your first love come back. Let your first love be ignited. Is that first love that produces a sacrificial pastor. The pastors of this ministry, what has been modeled for us is what? Is sacrifice and not settlement. What did I say? It is what? Sacrifice and not what? And not settlement. It's sacrifice. It's sacrifice. Number two, the second reason why people steal and do all of that is that they want to make it fast. It's that they want to make it fast. Sometimes you see, 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 Pastor Mike, maybe driving Jeep, see Rev. Dubus, and people who just started ministry the other day, the other day, they also want to drive Jeep. Do you know how long we have done this thing? I was sharing with the church on Tuesday, I said, you have not trekked anywhere what I have trekked. If you know, if you know I were very well, I was trekking from Transebu down to Ikenebu every day. That's my daily apportion trekking because I didn't have transport money. When I trek it, I get to office, I sleep for one hour to recover before work and start. <laughs> then I finish and I take it. I trek again back home. I've trekked from Owere to Nekede three times. Three by foot. I've trekked from Owere, Owere to Abala. Abala is when you pass Nase. So, if I'm driving a jeep now, am I not worthy? After doing, after doing advert for 20 years for Roadmaster. (laughs) 
There's somebody that just started yesterday. We gather a church of 25 people. Buy me Jeep. You're a criminal. 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 Criminal in ministry. The Bible says, prepare your work in the field and make it what? Fit for yourself. Then what? Afterwards, what? Build your house. Example, they did sell for me, then you know, Pastor Ben. And they gave me a land. The time we are doing this, he came that stuff. I sold that land. I sold it for four million. Sold it for four million. And that, that's how the whole thing entered there. As I'm talking to you now, I don't have a land. After how many years in ministry? It does not move me. If reward for ministry is land, then I should be in the bank. If reward for ministry is car, then I'm wasting my life. There is something higher. There is something that some of us have seen. There is something that pastor has seen. That is what is making us make the sacrifices, pay the price. Because there is greater reward there. All this thing that we are seeing is not the reward of ministry. Because you can have it without doing ministry. You can have it without doing ministry. And you see people that are just killing themselves. They kill the church. I said, my birthday just finished. Did you honor me? Show me the record. <laughs> if you change your name to honorable somebody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, someone listening to me. I'm be harassing 25 members. I'm be harassing 30 members. I'm be harassing if you students. Your car should reflect the church you pastor. Your house should reflect the church you pastor. It should reflect it. If it doesn't reflect it, you're a criminal of the highest order. A pastor cannot be richer than his church. Just like a president cannot be richer than the nation. Except he's working. Maybe he's working, they are paying him money from a, from a company. And these are the things we are finding. Then the third one sometimes is competition. I think somebody mentioned it. It's competition. Somebody is, they say, ah, look at what a pastor in this thing is. I must hammer too. I must have my own. Did they call you people the same day? Did they call you people the same day? So, ah, you see, 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 there. He put that God called. And the one he flashed, wants to stay with <laughs> Flashing. Even text. <laughs> Humble yourself. Humble yourself. God said something to me one day. He said, do you know my son when I sent him to the earth? He said, your level of prosperity now has beat that of Jesus Christ when he was on earth. He did not have the kind of house you live in. He did not have the kind of car you drive. He did not use an iPad. You have an iPad. He did not wear the kind of suit you are wearing. So you're even more prosperous than my son. So cool, low down. <laughs> cool down. Because there's contentment in this thing. The Bible says godliness with what? With contentment is great gain. I don't care what anybody has. I don't care. I don't care what anybody has. I have a work with God. I have a relationship with God. When he wants to bless me, he will bless me with those. I don't care what anybody has. Somebody is riding this somewhere like that. No, we are not called the same day. We might not even be judged the same day. So, how you clear all this competition, competition everywhere? Pastor Lord said you want to compete. Let it be on, on spiritual things. Not car. Not house. Not land. God did not kill his son to give you a platform to become wealthy. Please, can I say it again? God did not kill his son to give you a platform to become wealthy. That's not why he called, killed his son and sent you into the ministry. Am I talking to somebody? Hello, am I talking to somebody? Money. Money. So, I've, I've, I've also mentioned, you know, lack of contentment. People don't have contentment. Godliness with what? With contentment is what? Is great gain. Is great gain. Number three. <coughs> the third thing that Pastor said God is judging now is those speaking against leadership. Those speaking against leadership. People just open their mouth, they collect their pastor, they fire. 
collect their pastor's wife, they fire. Anything they see, they fire. Amen? And the root cause of this is lack of the spirit of honor. The spirit of honor. The spirit of honor. And let me say this as I, as I round up. This thing, called, this thing called honor. Honor is first of all an attitude of the heart. Am I communicating? Is what? Is first of all what? An attitude of the heart. Is now, is now expressed in several ways. So it can be expressed through giving. Somebody now goes to the man of God and honors the man of God. But it starts from the heart. Now, when it's not in the heart, somebody can be giving seed and still be finishing the person he's sowing to. It's true. It starts from here. When it starts from here, it affects every other thing. It's an attitude of the heart. It's a spirit. Spirit by spirit, I don't mean an anointing. You know what I mean? What? An attitude. An attitude of the heart. An attitude of honor. An attitude of what? Of reverence. Can I hear a big amen? Can I hear a big amen? So let me just mention a few things on how you manifest the spirit of honor. As I one of them is the way you see your father. Is the way you see your what? Your father. Your spiritual father. The way you see our pastor. Okay? Because there's a way you see somebody, you will not be able to open your mouth to be saying the things that you're saying. Please, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 13. <coughs> Galatians chapter 4 and verse 13. Please, you need to hurry. Now, can we do it together? You know how through infirmity of the flesh, I preach the gospel unto you uh -huh, at the first. Verse 14. Verse 14. Can we read? And my temptation, which was in my flesh, you despised not, nor what? Rejected. How did they receive him? Uh -huh. But received me as an angel of God, even as what? As Jesus Christ. Now, I want to ask you a question. How many of you, you have ever criticized Jesus Christ? Say this Jesus self. It will do. Man, no go rest. You can't see it. That means if we start seeing our pastor like Jesus Christ, we will not be speaking against him. If we start seeing him as an angel of God, Paul said, this is how they saw me. This is how he took me. As an angel, as Jesus Christ, sent to me. Sent to me. Because Jesus could not be here physically. He sent me another Jesus. He sent me another. So that is the attitude. The way you see him. The way you perceive him. Because I can just come and tell you, don't speak against leadership, don't speak against your pastor. No, but you have to lay the foundation. It's certain things that lays the foundation. Okay, let me mention something there again. Verse 15. Now see. This one blew my mind. Please, can we do it together? I want to go. He said, where is then the blessedness you speak of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. So if Paul needed an eye, they say he is now blind. They say we need eye donation. That the altar will be filled with eyes. Because the people, based on this revelation, they got to a point where there is nothing they cannot do for their pastor. There is nothing they cannot do for their father. There is nothing too big to give to him. There is nothing too much to give to him. Just the same way that there is nothing too big to give to Jesus. There is nothing too much to give to Jesus. When we see our pastor, the same way we see Jesus and an angel, there will be nothing. It will not even be a sacrifice. Because this is the man that God used to change my life. He is the man he used to alter my whole destiny. And what is there? You know, dropping one million or even giving him a car or even buying him a house. It's not an issue at all. Is perception first. Is perception first. Okay? Number three. On manifesting the spirit of honor. You know, is having a constant feeling of indebtedness to him. Because you see, anybody you have a constant feeling of indebtedness to, you will not open your mouth to finish the person. So, it's when gratitude dies and turns to ingratitude that people start firing missiles. 
Because all we need to do is to cast our mind back. How we were before we joined Dominion City. How we were before we met Pastor. And all the... And because the book of the torment, of the torment God will say to them, He said, Thou shalt not say in your heart, My might and the power of my hand has gotten me this way. But thou shalt remember, because people are quick to forget. They are quick to forget. They are quick to forget. Quick to forget. Completely quick to forget. Can I hear a big amen? See the next one. Your admiration and awe of him. Admiration. You admire your pastor. You admire pastor. You admire your father. You're in awe. Wow. Which day will I become like this man? Which day will I teach like him? See revelation. Do you know, 20 years in this ministry, I've, I've not seen pastor struggle, struggle on the pulpit for once. I've not, I've not been in one service, I was not blessed. But you can get to a point where I just sit down and be checking loopholes in the revelation. Okay, this thing pastor said, Crefo Dollar said it the other way. Creflo Naira also said it the other way. <laughs> Creflo Pound. <laughs> you now start doing someone analysis when others are getting blessed. Because the awe is gone. The admiration is gone. Before your greatest desire was to be like him. Lord, make, once you make me like pastor, I'm enough. Even close. Am I talking to somebody? Okay? Then, all of these things, the positive way you speak of him. The positive way you speak of him. So, with all of these things, you just naturally speak of it. Because if judgment is coming for these things, we need enough foundation to stay away from it. We need enough foundation to stay away from it. <coughs> Hallelujah. Then the other one is, the way you react when people speak, speak against him. The way you react, the way you react, there's a story, Ken Hagin's brother. He was somewhere eating in a restaurant. A guy comes and sat down. But I don't know if he was reading a book or what. A guy said, do you know, you know Casey Price? He's a thief. Do you know, do you know Kenneth Copeland? All these are thieves. And I said, do you know Ken Hagin? He's also a thief. Ken Hagin was like, carried bottle. Blasted the guy's head. Blasted the guy's head. They had to separate them. Only for the guy to realize that the person he's talking to is Ken Hagin's brother. Because somebody cannot be firing your father and you'll be smiling like a Christmas goat that has not brushed. <laughs> then after a while, you add your own. He said, I, I, I don't really want to say anything. <laughs> I don't really want to say anything. But you now say. Then like Absalom, your head will hang between heaven and earth. <coughs> Am I communicating? Am I communicating? So the way you react. Somebody cannot be criticizing your your pastor, the set man, and you're and you're happy. And be laughing. It shows that the spirit of honor. Is gone. The attitude of honor is gone. If he is there, something in you will react. Ah, what kind of nonsense is it? If he's not somebody you can correct, you just find your way. Find a way and leave that place. Not hearing that nonsense. Can I hear a big amen? amen. See another one. Believing in your father so much that there is no room to believe rumors concerning him. The any room where anybody lies, let them talk. Is their headache. <coughs> I made up my mind many, many years ago that anything you like say about pastor is your headache. Is your mouth? Is your headache? I'm not going to believe it. 
So the pastor stole the whole church money. It's a headache. I will not even think about it twice. I, I will not even think about it twice. Because I know the man I have followed for 20 years. I know he's a man of integrity and I will vouch for him. I will vouch for him. I will vouch for him. If I get to heaven, I'll look for him because I know he'll get there before me. But people like us will follow. Praise the Lord. So you, you see some people, they are discussing their pastor on Facebook. It's Facebook that is telling them their pastor. It's Twitter that is telling them the pastor that they have followed for many years because they did not make up their mind from day one. From day one. Can I couple and say, even if our robot is going to hell, I will, I'll go with him. To, to let you know how well he knows Kenneth Copeland. How, how well he knows other robots. So you can't talk him out of. People just sit there. Anything they, they say, are you serious? I will investigate. Special investigator. There's nothing to investigate. I choose what I believe and I believe what I chose. Please, can we say it together? One more time. Believe what I choose. Hallelujah. Then the way you honor him with your substance is also another manifestation of the spirit of honor. <coughs> you know, December has come now, end of the year. You're a pastor in this ministry. Year has ended. Pastor has pastored you for a whole year. And you stay there. You collect thanksgiving from the whole church even from the mosque beside the church. <laughs> you will not honor your pastor. But you remember your father in the village. You remember your mother in the village to send them something. And the man who covers you, you know year to year, the amount of flying we do, the amount of driving we do, the amount of things that happen in this ministry, and somebody in case you don't know, pastor prays for all of us. All of us. You know there are pastors who don't pray for their congregation. The only thing they pray for is for growth. Lord, 2,000 members. 2,000. Whether the ones that are there are dying, don't care. 2,000 members. 2,000. Pastor prays for us on his knees. Gets revelation from God. And... God shows him something that's about to happen. He will stand on his knees and win all the victory. And that's what he was saying recently. He said, I don't want any pastor in this ministry to die. I'm going to do the best that I can do to prevent it from happening. I'm going to... He's been saying it in Lagos. He's been saying it in Lagos. I'm going to do everything within my power. He said, I don't want widows around me. And I can cover us for a whole year. Then the year will end. Say, if I be a father, where is my word? My honor. If I be a master, where is my fear? Praise the Lord. Then this attitude of honor fills your heart. It will be easy to just stay safe in 2015. It will not be a temptation. It will not, it will not be an issue. Because in your heart, you are carrying a spirit of honor. Can I hear a big amen? amen. Can I hear a big Amen. The fourth one, as I close, our pastor shared, is those violating covenant. <coughs> those violating what? Violating covenant. Because covenants are very dear to God. Very dear to God. So, he said it's a fourth area. No, no, no. Where God is what? Is judging. Those violating covenant. Violation of covenant. And one of the ones he mentioned is the marriage covenant. The marriage covenant. The marriage covenant. As pastors, we must be careful the way we treat our wives. We must be careful the way we treat our spouses. As women in ministry, we must also be careful the way we treat our husbands. Covenant. There are scriptures upon scriptures on what people should do concerning marriage. Recently, I shared on 24 scriptures that has helped my, that has shaped my marriage, my marital life. 24. 
and many of them I heard them from pastor. 24. Just see this one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Be angry and say not. Let not the sun go down on your anger. So how can husband and wife, one moment they are not in talking terms. One moment. And the person climbs the pulpit and is preaching. You're a strong man, no? You're a very strong man. And your wife is sitting down there frowning. And you're dishing out Rema. Inside lack of communication. No. Meanwhile, what the Bible teaches is that anything that happens within 24 hours is, is really what? Sorted. Let not the sun go down on your anger. Then he talked about giving enforcement, giving honor unto the wives as unto what? Unto the weaker vessel. So maybe you're a pastor here and you beat your wife. You beat your wife. You finish beating her. She comes to talk. They say, honey, what's wrong with you? They say this. Domestic accident. Meanwhile, it's a pastor that inflicted that. No. No. Somewhere along the line, it's going to catch up with the person. It's going to catch up with the person. It's a covenant that you're dealing with. It's a covenant that you're dealing with. Please, can I hear an amen? Amen. It's a, you have a covenant with your wife. You entered before God. And that covenant states that you cannot maltreat the person. You say, you're a fool. You're a big fool. fool. Say, I'm a fool. I'm a fool. Say it again. I'm a fool. <laughs> How can you reduce a woman? And then the day you travel, it's not her turn to preach. He said, Open your Bible to the book of Revemaya. As Revelation and Jeremiah combined. <laughs> Does not even know the Bible anymore. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, we we'll have a marriage covenant. And this ministry believes in what? In the family. If, if you have been here for long, you, you, you've heard it from pastor he has modeled it to us this ministry believes in the family if a marriage is not working the ministry will not work that's the truth a marriage is not working the ministry will not work so please let's all go back and give attention and everywhere we are violating the marriage covenant everywhere we are violating it <clears throat> then the other aspect of covenant that God may, uh, you know that that the pastor mentioned is the oaths and the vows that we take before God. An example, people come, you know, they come for prayer and prophetic. They vow one million. They come for camp meeting. Vow one million. Go again in pastor's retreat. Another one million. Then come back to prayer and prophetic. Another one million. Go again for camp meeting, another one million. So he has gotten to a point that anytime you come out to vow, God tells Michael, please give me my Bible. <laughs> he goes, starts reading. Because the vow is useless to him. Because you see, if you make a vow, you do what? You pay your vow. Vows are sacred before God. He was listening, the pastor was discussing with us. He said, vows are sacred before you open your mouth to make a vow to God. It's not a promise. It's a vow. An example, Jephthah in the Bible made a vow to God. He told God, you give me victory in this battle. Once I come out, the first thing that comes out of my house, it belongs to you. And he was the daughter. So he was waiting to see whether it would be like Abraham. As he was about to kill her. Jephthah. Jephthah. Touch not that child, for I have provided for myself a ram. Jephthah waited. His hand was coming down. He was waiting to hear a voice. No voice. He was coming down. He said, Lord, speak for thy servant. I hear it. God said, for where? <laughs> Kill the child. You vowed it with your mouth. The first day I read that thing, he shook me. And he paid that vow. He paid that vow. So here people just make vows recklessly that they are not planning to pay. They're not planning to pay. And I used to do it years ago when I was in Awari. I just come to Enugu there, headquarters and make vow. And I disappear. I said, did they catch breeze? I said, did they catch breeze? 
But <coughs> canker worm, palm worm, <laughs> all of them they were catching me. If you see how I suffered, my two financial sins were tight. I was eating tight. Then I was I just make vow because uh, once I enter the bus, I'm gone. And then there was no G- GSM. How will you catch me? Until the next program, <laughs> I come and make another one. And that's what some of you are doing. And it's crippling your ministry. Because you make a vow before God and you don't keep it, then the vows that God is making to you, He will not keep it too. Because the Bible said, the Bible said unto the forward, God is also what? Forward. If you don't keep your word, don't expect God to keep His own over your life. Hallelujah. Please ask somebody for me. Can you even remember your vows? You just, just vow, 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 vow. If you print it, you can fill one exercise book. And they don't pay it. So please, as we're entering 2015, 2015. Now, I'm not talking about the next vow you make. The one you have made. The one you have made. Some of us made, made 10, 10 million. We are paying it. Then people that made 100,000 will run away. People that made 1 million will run away. And God will not take you seriously like that. Then some will even collect it in their chapter and die. They are over. They didn't pay. They collected somebody's own. <sighs> Hallelujah. We are the pastors of this ministry. It's what will model that the people will do what? We copy. If we start paying vows, they will start paying vows. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 is filled with that. You don't say with your mouth what you're not ready to do. He said, when you're in, in the house of the Lord, don't be in a hurry to rush out. But we say, keep your feet. But if you come out, if you come out before God, then do what you say, you will do. If you come out, God expects you to do what? To do what you say, you will do. And people just finish and Hallelujah. Today, we need to come to the place of repentance in many areas of our life. Many areas of our life. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Can I hear an amen? amen. I say mercy triumphs over judgment. Then we we'll now rededicate our lives to God and we we'll tell God, Lord, from now I'm going to live a holy life. From now, anything, church money. And what pastor said about church money is that you don't repent about church money. That repentance is not enough. You know the money that you took or you stole. You go and return it. If you don't return it, the consequences will still be there. The consequences will still be there. You collected false fruit. As money is entering your hand, <laughs> you gather that false fruit, you go and pay. You collected time. You gather it, you go and pay. You collected something. You, you gather it, you go and pay. I'm giving you his exact words. You don't just tell God, I am sorry. And expect that it will go like that. No. You get it and return it. So once money is involved, there is restitution. That's what I'm expecting us to do. Then you now go to the vows you made in camp meeting. Because prayer and prophetic is coming again. The vows you made in camp meeting, maybe in prayer and prophetic, and pay. And pay. As this conference is ending, you go to your chapter. That money enters your hand. You wire it into the account. You pay it into the account. Am I communicating? Bow down your hands. Let's pray. <coughs> Please just go ahead and talk to him. I don't know how you're going to say it. But please, what I came to do here today. We save lives. We save lives, believe me. We may have laughed, we may have enjoyed the message, but it's not about enjoying the message. It's about responding to it with a broken heart.
maybe it's immorality it's mental let's repent of it it's verbal it's physical it's emotional or money or rebellion speaking against leadership please let's repent of it spoke against pastor you spoke against your pastor in your own chapter tell him lord i'm sorry i change i change today i change show me mercy have you been impacted by this message please share your experience with pastor david obweli email address dominion image media at yahoo.com or call 017926879 0803-435-7959 0803-590-9900 0805-315-3823